Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Planty Ranty. Now it has been a while since I have done a Planty Ranty video, so for those of you who may be new, let me just catch you up real quick on what exactly this is all about. So this series of videos are basically videos where I kind of go off on things that are driving me crazy about the houseplant world, houseplant community, houseplant industry, plants in general, those kinds of things. And I do like to point out up front in all these videos that these are just merely my opinions on the things we're gonna be discussing today. It is 100% okay if you have a different opinion than me, as long as we are able to have a polite discussion about it without any hate going on in the comments below, that is welcome as well. But today we are actually going to be talking about plants that I quite honestly just do not get the hype about. I do not get the hype about them at all. And the idea for this video kind of first came up, I believe in my, I think maybe it was my favorite Syngoniums video or my 2024 wishlist video. A certain plant that is on our list of plants I don't get the hype about came up in that video and I was mentioning maybe I should just do a whole video about plants I don't get the hype about. So that is what we are doing today. So I want to go ahead and start with the one that I mentioned in that video and that is the Syngonium Milk Confetti. Now when this plant first came out, everybody was talking about it. It was super hyped up. Everybody was so excited about it. Here's another plant that has pink. It kind of like, I feel like all the pink plants that have been hyped in the past few years really were just riding the wave of the pink princess, which spoiler alert is also on this list. So we will be getting to that in a bit. But for the milk confetti, basically this is a light green, almost kind of mint green colored. You know what you guys, I almost forgot to scoot over again. So I have more room to show you the picture. So one second. Okay guys, much better. We have much more room to put the pictures up here and make them nice and big for you. So Milk Confetti Syngonium, mint colored kind of Syngonium with this pink splashy speckly type variegation. Every now and again, it will present with a little bit more of sectoral chunks, kind of similar to what we see on, for example, like the Syngonium Red Spot Tricolor. But for the most part, it's just these pink speckles. And what drives me absolutely nuts about these pink speckles is, honestly, you guys, it's not super speckled. And that's one of my complaints about it to begin with is that it seems to be really sporadic. You never know how much of this pink you're actually gonna have on these. And it seems to just vary greatly with every leaf that comes out. So when it's not a ton of the speckled variegation on this, I honestly think it looks like somebody aspirated Pepto-Bismol onto the leaf of this plant. I do. That is what I think of when I see this, is like somebody just spewed droplets of Pepto-Bismol on this plant. I do not find it attractive at all. I could probably also have titled this video plants that I find to be quite unattractive. I don't like to use the term ugly, but plants I don't find particularly beautiful to look at. And this is definitely one of them. And it's really just because I cannot get that image out of my mind that it looks like Pepto-Bismol that has just been kind of slightly aspirated and not in a beautiful pattern type way or anything like that on the leaves of this plant. So I will never fully understand the hype of this plant. I will never own one of these plants. I figure if you can get like, well, honestly, I'm not a big fan of most pink syngoniums, you guys, but regular pink syngoniums like the pink splash or I think there's just Syngonium Pink or even the Red Spot Tricolor that has the reddish pinkish color on it, to me are way more beautiful than this. So yeah, no, just no, it's no for me. All right, the next plant I wanna look at, and let me pull up, I did save some pictures. I wanna make sure I'm looking at the pictures that I'm showing you. Some of these plants, I have more than one picture to show you, but it just, it helps me to make sure that I'm not like accidentally forgetting to tell you guys something that I wanted to in regards to these plants. Okay, for these next few, I guess I should just say this up front. I'm probably gonna mention that a lot of these plants we're looking at today look like they're a bit sickly or unhealthy or unwell in some form or fashion. It's gonna be a theme, so just prepare yourselves for it. But this first one I wanna look at is the Raphidophora tetrasperma white monster. First of all, <laughs> I didn't even know there was a quote white monster for Raphidophora tetrasperma yet, but apparently there is. I've only heard of the white monster before for the Monsteras, but apparently here we have it, a Raphidophora tetrasperma, this particular one they're wanting $230 for, and I am sorry, but that just looks like an unhealthy, unwell plant. 
it looks almost like it has mosaic virus if I'm zooming in on it. And even if it didn't have mosaic virus, this just looks also alternatively like a plant that is desperately nutrient deficient in some regard. It does not look healthy. It does not really even look white to me. It looks more yellow. I just don't even, can't even begin to understand why somebody would want to pay that much money, especially for that size of this looking like that. It just does not look healthy, you guys. I do not understand it. And I'm going to be straight up honest with you. The Monstera white monsters, I have seen some pictures of juvenile ones that are really small, kind of similar to what we're looking at in terms of size here, that kind of look like this too. They don't seem to stay that way when they mature, but if there is one thing I know about Raphidophora tetrasperma is that does not always play out the same way as it does with the Monsteras. Case in point, if you have a tissue cultured Raphidophora, regular Raphidophora tetrasperma, which by the way, you guys, if you're not aware, I could probably do a whole separate Planty Branty video on tissue culture versus not tissue culture, specifically in regards to Raphidophora tetrasperma. But there's been a real push for people to disclose whether Raphidophora tetraspermas are tissue culture or not. The reason there's been such a push for that is because there has been such a high rate of mosaic virus amongst the tissue culture ones out there that the only way people, a lot of people feel safe and confident buying one that is not gonna have a virus is if it's not tissue culture. But bad news is most of the ones you're gonna find on the market today are tissue culture. I mean, I'm pretty sure the one I own is probably tissue culture, but that's why I say it's kind of like, you can look at Raphidophora tetrasperma and when it kind of takes on a look like this, sometimes you're like, does it have mosaic virus? Does it not? I find that the tissue culture ones, even the ones that don't have mosaic virus, kind of sometimes take on a look and freak you out and make you think it does. And it's not something that's just happening at a juvenile stage like this in the all green variety. It happens at that stage and it stays as it matures. So I kind of feel like that's what's gonna happen here. I feel like this is going to continue to just look sickly like this versus the white monster monsteras that tend to kind of look a little sickly when they're younger, but then they tend to look a little bit better once they mature. But yeah, I don't get the hype. Definitely, definitely don't get it on this one. All right, up next, man, this is going to be kind of a, <laughs> let's just do all three of these in a row because I feel the same way about the first two for sure. And then the third one is just baffling to me. It is 100% baffling to me. But let's start off with the variegated version of the philodendron melanochrysum. Now, philodendron melanochrysum, let me flash up my favorite picture from probably Craig Miller Randall once again, or Sydney Plant Guy, of a beautiful, mature, regular melanochrysum. Beautiful, beautiful plant, but as any of us average people know who have tried to grow these in our home, they are a bit of a nightmare. They are just constantly getting stuck leaves. It's really hard to get them to size up. They are just a whole nother animal. Like I'm not even gonna carry them in my houseplant inventory anymore for my plant pop-up shops because they're just too much work. Really, honestly, they are. So we already know that about the non-variegated version. So then somebody decided, well, now we've got this variegated version and let's get this hyped up. And everybody gets hyped up about this variegated version. Once again, I don't even think this looks good, you guys. It looks not right. It doesn't necessarily look sick. It kind of does look sick though. It really kind of does. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it doesn't look sick in the same way as the plant we just looked at did, but it looks like something like it's just going wrong with this leaf. It's not something that makes me go, oh, how beautiful. Look, what's going on? My plant's getting variegation. It doesn't make me excited. It makes me concerned. Like if I just seen this pop up on a regular melanochrysum. So yeah. There's that, and then we already know that the regular one is a pain in the butt to grow as is. And oftentimes you will find that some of these variegated varieties make it even harder to grow, not make it even harder, but are even harder to grow, you guys know what I mean, than the non-variegated versions. So I, for that reason, like this one in particular, I don't get the hype because, and I, I don't know if the price has come down on this one, they were asking like, hundreds and hundreds of dollars over the course of this past year when I've seen them for sale for this plant. And I just like, who who's going to pay for that? Like you're going to have like leaves coming in that either just break off, get stuck, get holes, stay tiny. 
I mean, you're never even going to really get to see this level of variegation because you're never going to get a leaf that big again is usually the experience that I've had anyway with the non-variegated variety. So yeah, for that reason, I don't get the hype. Now, building off of this, because the Melanochrysum does, when it's juvenile like that, remind me a lot of my philodendron micans. And the philodendron micans, the variegated version of that, has been super popular and even more so over this past year because I feel like the price has dropped some. But same situation, you guys. I just don't get it. I don't get the hype over it. If I walked in, hold on, let's see which picture I'm showing you of this plant before I start saying things incorrectly. Okay, that's what I thought. If I walked into a room and I saw this and you told me it was a philodendron micans, my first reaction would probably be, oh, is it okay? Because it just, once again, does not look 100% healthy to me. Now the variegation looks a little bit better in terms of how it's presenting. Like it's not just kind of wishy-washy variegation, if you will, but it is very, what's the word? pale. It looks very muted. It makes me feel like the plant is not doing well because when a plant, for example, gets too much light, it becomes chlorotic. Its color of its leaves starts to fade. It starts to look lighter. It starts not to look as vibrant. Same thing can happen when a plant is under fertilized and it's missing certain nutrients that it needs. And that's kind of what this looks like to me. It looks like maybe there was a beautiful variegated plant at one point there, but now it's suffering from too much light, not enough nutrition, maybe a few other different things as well. And it just makes me question what's wrong with this plant. And for that reason, I will never get the hype, but it gets worse you guys, because I just can't even, I don't even remember when I came across this next plant that I'm about to show you. I feel like it was sometime in the last month and I'm still just baffled. I'm like, is this a legit thing? Because I had not really heard of it before I came across it. And just looking at all the pictures I was able to find of this, I don't get it. I do not get this, you guys. And it is another Philip version of a philodendron micans that is referred to as pink mint. You guys, this plant looks like it's on death's door. I mean, look at it. Like, why? Why would anybody want to buy that? It is so not look healthy. It doesn't look healthy. I mean, it's just nothing about this looks right to me. And I forget, I found somewhere where somebody was asking, was actually selling one and asking for like, I want to say like 600 something dollars for like a two leaf situation like this. Look at that one leaf, you guys. I mean, it's like completely curled up. It looks like it's dying off. This looks like, it doesn't even look like a micans, first of all. The shape of the leaf is more elongated. It's not as heart-shaped and not as squat, I guess would be the word. So I don't even like associate it in my brain with a philodendron micans for starters, but even if it was the right shape, it looks like a philodendron micans leaf that maybe got sun stressed and is dying off now. Like there is nothing attractive about this. I have found more photos to show you, by the way. Here's another one where at least the leaves don't look like they're curling up and you know about to totally die off. But once again, the coloring does not look right. I also just don't understand the name. I understand the pink part of the name, even though one of these leaves looks more orange, but why mint? Where's the mint coming into this? And what are these weird like raised? Can you guys see this? I'll try to zoom in for you. It's like weird raised green spots on the leaves. I don't know, it's so bizarre, you guys. Maybe the mint comes from this like green stripe running down the center, the veining. I, we, we didn't really see that in the previous picture. So I don't know, but this just does not look healthy. I mean, every one I found, here's another one, does not look healthy. This one doesn't even look pink, it looks yellow. And once again, it looks like those leaves are like drying up and dying off. Every single picture I found of this plant, you guys, this is what it looked like. How, how is this a thing that people are hyped up about? Well, once again, probably because the word pink is involved and anytime you involve the word pink and honestly the word mint lately is just a hype term as well. So I guess you can combine the two and you get this hyped up plant, but um, yeah, no thank you. I'm not gonna buy it. I would highly recommend you never buy it because that just does not look right. I feel like all of those probably have already died off or are going to die off relatively soon. But since we are mentioning the word mint, let's look at a mint plant that I don't get the hype about. So this is a Monstera laniata, I believe is how you pronounce it, mint. And once again, very similar to the Raphidophora tetraspermo white monster we were looking at, it just 
doesn't look quite right to me. It doesn't look quite healthy. It it doesn't look quite as virus-y to me as the Rifidophora we looked at did, but it does look like it is slightly perhaps nutrient deficient. Maybe it got a little fertilizer burn even. Maybe it's getting a little bit too much light. Maybe all of the above. It just does not look healthy to me at all. I don't find it even remotely attractive. Thankfully, this is one of the plants on the list that's actually not asking too much money for it. But then again, I, there are plenty of other plants I would prefer to put that $45 towards than this one. Now, I will try to find a mature picture, if I can, of a laniata, laniata, however you say it. I might have a hard time. And that's another thing, you guys. When I have a hard time finding pictures, mature pictures of hyped up plants like this, it makes me start to question things. So if it is a plant that is like brand new to the market, so let's say when like the Philodendron Pink Princesses first came out and like nobody had any except for nurseries and maybe like a few like private collectors or things like that, but they weren't readily available. So yeah, trying to find mature, pictures of mature ones was pretty difficult. But with some of these plants, you guys, they have been around long enough that we should be able to find mature specimens. And if we can't, that kind of makes me feel like something is going wrong with these plants and they're not reaching maturity. And if that's the case, then I really start to question what is causing this mint effect on this plant. And when I can find information on what causes the effect on some of these plants that we're looking at, I will tell you guys. But once again, when I can't find information on what causes this effect, I start to really question is this not potentially just actually some kind of viral situation going on and somebody just decided to call it mint and try to sell it. But I don't get the hype about it. Not attractive, not, not something I will ever be acquiring. Okay, so this next plant that we're gonna look at, similar to the variegated philodendron micans where I was saying it just looks muted, it looks faded, that's the good word for it, faded. This plant has that similar look to me as well. And for that reason, I just, I don't like it and I don't get the hype. So this is the variegated philodendron black cardinal. I, it almost looks in this picture like a dried up bouquet of flowers looks. Do you know what I mean? Like when you have nice vibrant, like let's say maybe we had some yellow, red, orange roses in a bouquet and we let them dry out. And as they dry out, they lose the vibrancy of that color and they start to look that crispier texture. This is what this looks like to me. That is what that looks like to me. It almost makes me think that it would feel crisp, crispy to the touch just because of how the coloring looks. Now, some people might absolutely love this. Once again, this is just my opinion. If you disagree, that is 100% A-OK. -okay. But to me, this looks like a plant that is on its way up. It hasn't been watered enough, really, is kind of how I feel about this hasn't been watered enough, it's starting to yellow up and die off. I think I have another picture. Okay, here's one, another one. Now this one doesn't look so much like it's like dried up and about to die or anything like that. But once again, you can see the colors are just so muted and it makes it look almost muddy to me. And I do not like it when plants look muddy at all. I just don't get it, you guys. I don't get the hype and I don't remember how much these are going for right now, but no amount of money would be <laughs> worth it, in my opinion, at least for me, to buy this plant. Okay, up next we have another Syngonium on the list, and of course it just happens to be another one that has kind of a pinkish coloring involved to it. Let's just get it up here first. This is the Syngonium Strawberry Ice. No, just know you guys, I do not get the hype over this one, and it was so popular when it first started coming out, and I don't know why, I mean it just, oh, I don't even, it looks bloody. It looks like a plant that got beat up and is bleeding out. I mean, that's the best way I can describe it. Like, it just doesn't look right, you guys. It does not look right at all. I mean, that front leaf, like where the green actually is overlaid with that pinkish reddish color. I mean, that just looks muddy and brown. Like, ugh, I just don't, I don't find this attractive at all. I do not find this attractive at all. I just, ugh, no, just no, no. I mean, maybe if like we had more leaves like this one over on the further side where it looks like it's mostly that reddish color like the entire leaf, like maybe if your regular, the regular green leaves that didn't have variegation, didn't have that weird like 
hint of red on them. I don't know. Like if they were just had green leaves mixed in with some of those leaves, some leaves that were all that reddish color, then I would get the hype. I would get the hype. I could see that. Like that would not look bad. But this just looks like a bloody mess. I'm sorry, you guys. It literally looks like a bloody mess, both figuratively and literally, I suppose. So yeah, no, don't get it. Don't want it. Don't care for it. Honestly, if I saw it in somebody else's house, I would probably be like, why? But once again, to each their own. All right, next up, let's talk about the Philodendron Pink Princess because I alluded to it earlier. Now, I do want to specify that I'm talking about the original Pink Princess, I guess is the way that I should say it. So the Pink Princess that first came out a few years back that everybody was hot to trot about and I never got it. I never got the hype. I didn't get it at the time. I don't get the hype now because some people still like that original version, even though we have better versions. We'll talk about that in a second. I don't get it. First of all, nine times out of 10, you never knew whether you were actually gonna get decent variegation or not on the plant. Sometimes it was just virtually non-existent. They also tend, when they first came out, they tended to revert a lot more easily, it seems like, than some of the newer varieties that we have on the market now. And when they revert, they kind of took on like this muddy appearance when the new leaves come in. And in case you haven't figured it out today, I don't like plants that look sick and I don't like plants that look muddy. So it would be kind of this brownish leaf that would come in and it just did not look good at all. It also has a notorious history for not wanting to size up, for the leaves getting stuck, new leaves getting stuck coming in, coming in tiny, no matter what you do, it's not, easily attracted to attaching to like a moss pole, for example, because it is a hybrid philodendron. It's a hybrid of a climber and an upright philodendron. And since upright philodendron don't like to climb, and that seems to, that genetic part of it seems to have taken over a little bit more than the climbing genetics. So it doesn't really readily want to attach to a pole. And because it's not totally a climber, it seems like it's confused. It's like it's having an identity crisis, right? That's why I feel like it's not sizing up. It doesn't want to climb because the upright philodendron part of it is like, but I don't need to climb. But then it's like it can't size up because it's not climbing, right? That's why I feel like there's constantly those tiny little leaves coming in that everybody complains about that they can't do anything about. They can't seem to get it to change. This is a common theme among hybrid philodendrons that are hybrids of climbers and upright philodendrons. Now, it just seems to be worse in some of them than in others. So for example, my philodendron red Anderson seems to be doing fine. We're not having all those kinds of crazy problems. The pink princesses, not so much. My white princess is giving me some problems with that right now as well. That plant may not stay in my collection if it continues to give me those problems. But yeah, it can be a problem. And when it is a problem, it is a bad, bad problem. And the original pink princess definitely has this problem. Now we have the newer varieties now that are a lot more attractive in my mind, in my opinion. So like the more marbled variety that came out earlier this year, not this year, I guess, because we are now in 2024. So back in 2023, earlier in 2023, when this marbled version came out, which I think looks way better and marbled variegation tends to be more stable, you guys. So it tends to stick around at a higher level and it tends to not be as likely to revert. Now, I'm sure these plants still have a problem with leaves coming in small and not wanting to size up. I could be wrong. If you own one of these and are not having that issue, definitely comment down below and let us know. But this one I get the hype about. The original one, no. And the amount people were paying for those original ones, hell no. These are way more affordable too. They're everywhere now. Like I remember when they first hit my area, they were in Costco and it was like everybody was making a mad run to Costco that day and buying up as many of them as they could. And I think they were only like 20 bucks, right? And they were decent size, like six inch pots of these. So yeah, that I get the hype about, but the original ones, no. I'm very glad though that we have progressed and come out with a better, more attractive, more stable version of this plant. Okay, you guys, we have one more plant to look at on the list of the 10 plants that I really don't get the hype about. And honestly, you guys, I have not really heard much about this plant lately, but I remember when it first came out, hearing a lot about it, and I was like, really? Like, I don't get it. And I am thinking that the reason that I really have not heard much about it since then, and honestly, when I was looking for people who were selling it, prepping for this video, every time I would click on a link, it would be like that page was gone. So I have a feeling this plant actually did have issues with it. And that is why nobody is selling it anymore. But this is yet another Syngonium and it was what was known 
as the Syngonium Pink Rolly. Pink is in the name of a lot of these plants, you guys. I really didn't realize it until I started filming right now. But yes, yeah, Syngonium Pink Rolly. And called a Rolly because, well, as I'm sure you can see, all these leaves are nice and rolled up. Why? Excellent question. Allow me to fill you in. So there is a plant known as a Syngonium Mosaic. This in, its, in and of itself is not a horrible looking Syngonium at all. However, apparently somebody came across or developed a mutation in this plant. I could not figure out if it was just a natural mutation that occurred, if it was something that was forced when people were trying to perhaps create some kind of tissue culture version of this plant or crossbreed it with another Syngonium or what, but a mutation occurred and this was the result of it. Now, if you have a mutation in a plant and it results in a plant growing where its leaves never unfurl, they just stay curled up like this, I would think that was a red flag to start. Just saying, like it doesn't seem that far-fetched to be like, hey, maybe this is an unhealthy mutation, but for some reason, somebody started selling these and whoever was responsible for this apparently did a really good job of hyping them up because people were hot to trot for these and they were selling for hundreds of dollars, you guys. I am sorry, but that looks like either A, the plant is something's really wrong and it can't unfurl its leaves, or B, in the case of some of the pictures that I found of these, it looks like the plant's starting to die and the leaves are starting to re-roll up on themselves as they crisp up and die off. I have a hunch that the reason we are not seeing these plants as much anymore or hearing about them is because this actually was a bad mutation and it did result in these plants going down how quick going downhill pretty quickly and dying off. But even if that wasn't the case, why? There is nothing about this that looks okay to me, attractive. I mean, if somebody came in my home, like even somebody who didn't know about plants would probably come and look at this and be like, oh, I thought you had a green thumb. This one doesn't look like it's doing so hot. Yeah, no, I would agree with them, actually, if they came in and said that. I mean, if I, and also if I had to explain to them, like, oh no, that's how it's supposed to be, I feel like they would be like, and you like that? Like, I'm just saying, you guys, once again, my personal opinion to each their own. This does kind of remind me a little bit of the Syngonium Godzilla, which has a tendency to not fully unfurl its leaves, but it doesn't look this ridiculous, okay? Like, hopefully I have a picture I can throw up. So with these, it's like the leaves never fully like flattened out. It's just like the edges stay a little bit rolled. Not exactly my favorite like looking plant, but it's nowhere near as atrocious as this and nowhere near as ridiculous and nowhere near as I don't get the hype. And there's a lot of hype around those Godzillas too. Not 100% saying I get the hype of the, around those, but I get it more than this. This is absolutely ridiculous. So uh, this brings me to how I would like to wrap up this video. Lots of times, some of these plants that get hyped up, some of them are legit plants that are gonna stick around for a long time. For example, the Philodendron Pink Princess. However, some of these, you guys, you gotta stop and question sometimes what's actually going on that is causing this on this plant. Is this a situation where there might be something bad at play here that's really not healthy for the plant that is causing it to look this way? And then you have to go that step further and say, is somebody who's selling this, whoever came up with the, the idea of, hey, I've got this plant now and I'm gonna name it this and I'm gonna get it out there. I'm gonna build all this hype. Are they legit? Are they legit? Or are they just like, crap, I have a plant that mutated and I have a ton of them and I don't wanna throw them away. I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh, I'm gonna go make some money off of them by hyping them up, calling them something with pink or mint or both in the name and getting them out of here and selling them for an inordinate amount of money. So really just be kind of cautious with some of these like hyped up plants, you guys. Like I said, some of them legit, some of them not. I just like to play it a little bit on the safer side for those ones that just really truly look unhealthy unless I can find proof that it's been like tested and it's not actually a virus, etc. So just always be cautious before you join in on the hype. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video today. If so, please be sure to click that like and or subscribe button down below. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Aloha.